Another blood red sunset and yet another moon phase and still another hundred miles to my next resting place Driving down the road, eyes on the horizon Within my car I'm all alone But feeling good and feeling strong Knowing that this path I'm on brings me to myself I'm driving Hey now all, I'm Joey C. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Tripper. This is the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. With me, as always, is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Joey. How's it going? It's going good. We're going to talk about something that I'm actually really excited about, and that's guides. Mm. With the name of the show being Spirit Sherpa, we talk a lot about guides and helping people through journeys of difficult to reach places. But in the spiritual sense, when we talk about guides, we're talking about something a little different there, right? Yeah. What are guides? Guides are entities that are on the other side of the veil. Think of them as your spirit Sherpa <laughs> from the other side, you know? Okay. I mean, I'm the one who's here talking to you and giving you some advice on stuff around magic, but they're the people who are on the other side. So, you know, like your guardian angel, your guardian okay. angel is sort of a guide, right? Mm -hmm. So they'll make sure that you don't go in places that are going to be dangerous to you. Uh, but your spirit guides are actually your interface with the spirit world. And so when you learn how to talk to them, when you learn how to connect in with them, and you learn how to communicate with them, then they can be incredibly useful. I actually have an open channel to my guides at all times at this point. I haven't always, but you know, after 20 years of practice, they talk to me, I talk to them, and it's all good. But what you have to keep in mind about guides is that they are on the other side of the veil. And so, you know, as we talked about before, they have a broader perspective. They see the future, they see the past, they see the interconnectedness of things, and they understand how things work. So they may tell you to do something that seems like this might not be the best choice. Yep. You know, it's like, why would I not go to this meeting or why would I not do this thing? But then later you discover that it was a very good choice. I mean, if you if you look into the history books, there are a ton of people who had tickets for the Titanic, who never got on the boat. There were a ton of people who were meant to be in the Twin Towers that morning and didn't go or mm. were running late so that they didn't make it. Those are people who were being guided. And then there's a certain percentage of people who are just not going to make it in any given case. But the percentage of people who didn't make it in those situations is much higher. Right. And, and that's the reason. How do people know that they're being guided. You mentioned that you have an open channel. You you recognize when you're receiving a message from your guide. How can people sort of tell that difference? So sometimes it's it's something as simple as you're being delayed, okay. right? If you're trying to get somewhere and there are people cutting you off and slowing you down and stepping out in front of you in traffic and whatever, there's probably a good chance that you're supposed to be late and you'll show up exactly on time. The other person is running late and they're hoping that you're going to be late too. And they're manifesting that and slowing you down or something like that. The moment of confusion, the stepping onto the train in the wrong direction, having the moment of just this clarity of, I really don't want to go. So here's an example and even now, sometimes they'll do this to me. Wednesday this past week, I was supposed to be at an all-day event that I really didn't want to go to. And normally, if I really didn't want to go to something, I would just take it off my calendar. But I was like, no, nah, I don't want to take that off my calendar. I don't know why. I just don't want to take it off my calendar. So I had the whole calendar day blocked out because I was supposed to be going to this thing. And I really didn't want to go. And even up until the day before, I was like, oh, okay, I've got this thing tomorrow. I'm going to go. It's in my calendar. I, I'm not supposed to take it out. I don't know why. Morning comes. And I had decided the night before that because of traffic, I was going to go, go a little late because I didn't really want to be there anyway. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I'll be there a little late. It'll be fine. Turns out a friend of mine was ended up having a major meltdown that day. Mm -hmm. Just just completely on the floor in a puddle. And I spent six hours on the phone with him that day, mm -hmm. off and on throughout the course of the day. I would not have had that time if I had not left that on my calendar. Yep. I would have had other things booked in. Sometimes it's just that. 
that shows up. It's just this, this feeling of, no, I don't want to do that. I don't know why, but I just don't want to do that. That's an interesting thing because it, it then leads me to believe that one of the important pieces of connecting with your guides is not only sort of acknowledging that the messages are coming through, but also recognizing that those things that would be frustrating elements of your day might be intentional and purposeful. And it sort of changes your perspective. Don't get frustrated about it. Look at what the potential cause is of this or the reason behind this is. And it may be for your benefit. You know, take an example of, let's say you were doing that interview and it wasn't the Twin Towers. It was somewhere else. But you got on the train going in the wrong direction. You're late for the interview and therefore you don't get the job. And you're thinking, oh, my God, this is horrible. Well, what you don't know is that if you had gotten the job, you would have been miserable. Right. Or you would have missed the opportunity to get this other job that made you meet the love of your life. Yeah. So sometimes we think that our guides did us wrong because we haven't seen down the path yet. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like, but you, oh, I really needed that job. Right. It's our guide saying you'll understand in time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I tell people, I'm like, the first five years I started really talking to my guides, I spent a lot of that time cussing them out. Yeah. Telling them to fuck off. I'm not doing it. No, I'm not going there. You know, I'm mad at you, whatever. Right. And and after five years, I was like, you know, I always end up doing what they want. So there's no point in telling them to fuck off. <laughs> and eventually, it all makes sense. So there's no point in yelling at them. Right. Just... You know, be with what is. Yeah. But I spent five years just going ah! all yeah. the time. But I was I was really angry it's too. A, it, so it didn't take much to piss me off at the time. I hadn't hadn't really worked on my anger yet. <laughs> well, so, that's and that's a part of it, right? That's part of right. that personal journey is exactly is, uh, draining the well of rage. Exactly. Yeah. Because then we start to see things differently. Yeah. Are there different types of guides that are out there? There are, you know, there are guides that are with you for a specific purpose. And then there are guides that are with you for your whole life. Mm-hmm. There are, are spirit family guides, people that you, you travel into different lifetimes with who decided, you know, somebody decides to stay back and, you know, hold the, hold down the fort on the other side while everybody else goes and plays in the pool. And, and they're serving as sort of the lifeguard. Yeah. So sometimes there's that. You have to keep in mind though that your guides, some of them have never been incarnated. So when you have guides that have never been incarnated, you have to be very clear with them and you have to be conscious because what happens is that you end up in a situation where they don't realize that you have to do things like sleep, Hmm. eat, pay your bills, you know, things like that. Yeah. And so one of the things that happens as we go through this process, especially if we're on the express train, if I haven't told the story yet about the express express train, have I? I don't think so. Okay. I'll, I'll tell that in a minute. But especially if you're on the express train, you really have to pay attention to how much they're downloading at once because they will actually teach you things in your sleep. Mm -hmm. And then you end up getting exhausted because you're actually working in your sleep. People don't realize that they can just ask for a night off or a week off or a month off from the education. Right. And that they should, in fact. They're like, you know, I see this a lot with beginners. They get all stuck in the, well, I'm behind and I'm supposed to be. And it's like, you know what? If you're going to blow up, you're going to lose a lot of time. You're better off to take a couple days off or a week (laughs) off and get a full night's sleep and come back to it fresh and and be ready to go than to allow yourself to get to the point where you hit a complete meltdown in your puddle on the floor and you don't have any way to pick yourself up and you lose a month because you're toast. Right. And that's similar to the, what you talked to us about when you were telling us about growing your channel to receive energy. You got to do it in the right, the right timing. You yeah. can't do everything at once. Yeah. There's, there's good self care is super important. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, the people with the deepest containers often have crappy self care. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's, that's part of the process too. So, okay. I promised I'd tell you the story about the express train, about the express train. Back when I first moved into the magical house, no, actually, that's not true. I wasn't even in the magical house yet. It was before I moved in. I was still living in Connecticut and I was commuting an hour and 15 minutes up to spend time with my friends in the, in the magical house. So 
the magical house was also the Renaissance fair house, the Rennie worker house. And right. so the Renaissance fair workers would come home and stay in this house in between the days of the Ren fair. One night we slept 30 people in the house. Wow. Yeah. It was a six bedroom, four bath, three story Victorian. So we had people everywhere. Don't yeah, I was just going to say that's still but pretty cozy. <laughs> it was, it, we had people everywhere, but it was, th- you know, three o'clock in the morning and we were, Doing a grail ritual, which is where you have a big chalice with something drink in it, which is often wine. And you have somebody who's facilitating and you have this circle of people who are all putting energy into something that you're looking to create. And so we had 30 people in the circle, three o'clock in the morning, which is the witching hour. It's the time when the veil is thinnest between the worlds. And we are all putting, we're all magical people, all putting our intent into this, this chalice. So big, big work. That's a lot of energy. A lot of energy. And my shaman and I were the first two people to drink out of that chalice. And so you make a wish and you drink. And so, or set an intention and drink. And so he and I both set the intention for the exact same thing without telling each other. We were doing our, our wishes silently, right? And we both wished to be on our spiritual path. <laughs> and our lives just went boom. <laughs> <laughs> because be careful what you wish for, for you will surely get it, right? <laughs> and and uh he was in the final semester of his engineering degree and he was halfway through the semester and lost his funding oh so he was pushed into his spiritual path so he was Hardcore. kicked out of school right because <laughs> <laughs> he had no funding now, who who hears about losing financial aid halfway through the semester right. doesn't that happen. never happens doesn't right happen. never happens but it happened to him and i i don't even remember all the things that happened to me but but it it was so significant that we actually we had this thing that you know it, when you're on the express train is kind of like being on a roller coaster it's supposed to be fun right we right? we and so we we got to the point where we would call each other up when something happened and there would be this weak little wee. <laughs> <laughs> you'd answer the phone and you'd hear wee. It's like, oh God, what happened now? <laughs> and it was just this thing we did for several months after this happened as, as our lives just blew up one thing after another because it's always breakdown before breakthrough, right? Yeah. And, and so, yeah, that was a big time express train moment. And uh, when you're on the express train, by the way, you can't ground. Or you shouldn't, because you're. It's as though you're on a train going 90 miles an hour, and you're trying to stick <laughs> Try a, a stake rebar in the ground. through yeah. the ground. You know, <laughs> you're just going to get thunk, 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 yeah. as it as it throws you through the train, and and eventually stops you. So yeah. you you can't ground when you're on the express train. You have to center. Instead, center is finding the the grounding point within. It's, okay, it's it's in the literal center of your being, and it's the connection point between you and the universe, and everybody who exists right so when you're if you if you do what we did and and you know blow your life up uh center don't ground that's an interesting uh difference there i think i don't think everyone appreciates that who's doing this because you often hear people say oh you got to ground you got to ground you got to ground but sometimes centering is better well sometimes centering is the only option right i mean i'm moving right now i can't ground yeah I got, I got nothing to ground into. I'm moving. Yeah. When you're moving, you you pull your roots up. You have to. Right. How do you move if you don't? Yeah. And, and when you say moving, you mean literally moving. Literally. You're changing my, homes. I'm, I'm moving my home from Boston to Virginia. <laughs> right. So to Richmond. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm physically moving by my house. And right. so, you know, when that happens, you pull up your roots. Right. You can't build roots in a place that you'll, you are moving from. Correct. Yeah. Oh. Interesting. You mentioned a little while ago um, something that that is interesting to me, and I think it would help the listeners if we talked about that for a minute. And that's spirit family. Um, you said, you know, there are people, there are, there are, are souls being spirits that that stay. Some come. We. What is a spirit family? So a spirit family is uh, people that you reincarnate with over and over again. And so you know, one day I'll be your mom. Next day I'll be your 
sister. Next day, I'll be your lover. Or not day, but life. Right. Because right? <laughs> that, that would be a weird, weird week. That would be a very weird week. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next life, I will be your brother or your lover or your sister or your mother or your child or your whatever. Yep. Uh, best friend, yep. you know, whatever. So we will incarnate with each other in... Uh, various and sundry formats. So it's, it's basically a similar. We, we referenced D D earlier right. in the episode last time. Um, and, uh, you know, it's the same idea. You're going into a role playing game with the same people. Right. Over same. and over again. You're just playing different characters. Yeah, right. That's very cool. So spirit family is, um, is sort of that, that collection of people. And you, you had mentioned that sometimes, so we incarnate with them over and over again. They're the same players, but in sometimes, um, in a D and D reference, some of them may stay back and be the yes. the game master. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And you know, some of them may play the villain. Mm -hmm. Right, because part of this journey we're on and coming back and doing the work that we're doing over time is not always to um, the the people we meet who are our nemesis. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if that's the, the plural, but I'm making it the plural. Yes. <laughs> Our nemesi. They're also important in the journey and the work that we're doing. Yeah. 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 In fact, um, you know, if you watch Sherlock, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Moriarty defines Sherlock in a lot of ways. And that's the same concept for us. The people that we fight against often define us more than the people who support us. In any good work of literature... Your hero cannot be a hero without a villain. So we need balance in in anything to keep our interest. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that's relevant here, but it just sort of struck me. Yeah, we are on the ultimate hero journey. Yeah. Hero's journey here. And, I mean, sometimes your spirit family is just somebody who you meet in passing who creates a pivot point. You know, mm -hmm. you look back and you go, this one person said this one thing to me at this one place and I never saw them again, but it completely changed the way I saw everything in that moment. Yeah. There was an agreement in place before you came into this life for them to be there and to say that at that time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that moment where you have that, ooh, you, you meet somebody and you're like, ah, oh, yeah. right. There's that ooh moment. And that's somebody you have incarnated with before. So let's transition now into okay. Ask Kelly. Do we have, have you received any questions from people uh, about spirit guides or guides in general? Yeah, I've gotten a lot of questions about spirit guides over the years. Um, mostly, how do I talk to them? Is really, really what it is. Exactly. You know, they're like, I don't know when to tell, you know, how to tell if they're talking to me or whatever. Right. And the answer is that, that oftentimes your spirit guide sounds like you're talking to yourself in your head. And so, you know, test it out. See if doing what that thing says, assuming it's not violent or, you know, dangerous, uh, is a good idea. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, test it out and see, see what happens. Right. Uh, the other thing that we can do is we can practice with our guides. So you can just sit down and invite your guides to, to communicate with you. And you can say, okay, get my attention physically. Mm -hmm. And then just sit and wait and see what happens. Maybe your ear itches. Maybe mm -hmm. your nose itches. Maybe your eye twitches. Maybe you get a shooting pain down your throat thigh, you know, who knows, but that's, that's how they're going to get your attention. Maybe, and then say, okay, well, get my attention, uh, through sound and maybe you'll hear something in your head or out loud that freaks you out. But you know, <laughs> I know people who hear it out loud. Um, maybe you will, and then say, okay, get my attention visually. And, you know, maybe you'll see something flit in the corner of your eye or, you know, whatever. Um, or you'll close your eyes and you'll see something and in your mind's eye sort of thing. Um, and you just go through the senses and give them an opportunity to show you how they're trying to get in touch with you. Mm -hmm. And then just note that and get more present in your life and more conscious in your life. And then you'll start to hear them better. Yeah. You mentioned hearing it in your head. That's what some call intuition. When we talk about being intuitive, that isn't always coming from us. Right. And that's the differential that, that we need to make here when we're talking about guides. Yeah. So intuition is just having a sense about things. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, as I was telling the story about my friend and the day off and or the day I was supposed to be going to the event, that was really more intuition mm -hmm. than than my guides, because it was just me going, oh, I don't want to do that. Right. I don't want to do that. I don't know why, but I just don't want to do that. That's intuition. Right. Right. That's you picking up when you think of somebody you haven't talked to in ages and they call you five minutes later. Yeah. You know, that's intuition. Right. right? When you. um uh, so I remember being in an airport and I'd just gotten uh, an oatmeal at Starbucks and it came with brown sugar mm -hmm. and I don't use the brown sugar. And I was like, I should take this with me. And I was like, why would I take that with me? That's ridiculous. <laughs> and and I was like, no, I should take it with me. And so I took it with me. And then I got on the plane and there's these people from Brazil on the plane asking for brown sugar for their coffee, which, of course, nobody had on the plane. <laughs> but I said, here. Have some brown sugar for your coffee, right? <laughs> you know. Yeah. And and so you know sometimes it's it's just you know that. Yeah. But that's your intuition, right? Whereas your guides are more telling you which direction to go in and what what to do, and you know take a left here, take a right there, you know, wait five minutes to leave, you yeah. know that sort of stuff. Okay. All right. This is very cool. Now, in terms of things that you have, what can people sort of leverage from your portfolio to help them with their journey around this aspect? Well, actually, what I wanted to, to mention today is I have what I refer to as a, a discovery session. Mm -hmm. So if you're on your spiritual journey and you don't know what the next step is, if you are on your magical path and you don't know what the next thing to do is and you're looking at this wide array of stuff and your complex life and you're trying to figure out what the hell do I do now and you're you're just you've got this sort of overwhelm from everything that's going on around you and you're trying to figure out what's the right path to whatever it is that you're trying to do sign up for a discovery session. They're okay. free. So I'm going to encourage you to really, really do that because that'll give me a chance to provide you with some support. And what I want to say is this, it is not a sales pitch for me. I am going to listen to what it is that you have to say and then provide you with advice on where to go from there. And that advice may be one of my programs. It could just as easily be referring you to one or more other things that are out in the world, a book, a seminar, a workshop, a, an, uh, you know, a, a coach. Um, I had a woman call me the other day asking for some help for her and some help for a friend of hers. And I actually referred both of those out to, to different practitioners because it, I wasn't the best person. Could I have done the work that she was asking for? Yes. But I was not the best person to do that work. And I wanted her to have the best person. Right. And so I referred her. So, you know, just know that that's really where I'm coming from with these is just to sort of help you figure out what's next. Mm -hmm. So people can sign up for these discovery sessions on your website? Yeah. On my website at the very top in the, in the top of the banner, it says book a session. And if you click that button, it'll take you through. And one of the very first things you see is, is book a discovery session. Awesome. Okay. That's great. That's a really useful tool folks to, to be able to get in touch with Kelly and start to define sort of the path that you would be best and most helpful for you to walk on where you are in your journey. Very cool stuff. Okay, that is all the time we have uh, for this week. But thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, be sure to join us next time as Kelly adds another chapter into your beginner's guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Joey C. here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. I travel over 13,000 now, so I leave behind a little Spirit Trippa is the sole property of Kelly Sparta Enterprises and is distributed under Creative Commons BY-NC-ND 4.0 license. For more information about this licensing, please go to creativecommons.org. Any requests for deviations to this licensing should be sent to K-E-L-L-E at K-E-L-L-E-S-P-A-R-T-A dot com. That's Kelly at kellysparta.com. To sign up or to get more information on the programs, offerings, and services referenced in this episode, please go to kellysparta.com. This episode of Spirit Trippa has been produced by Honu Voice Productions. Thank you.